greet you in that wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. We bring you greetings from the Macedonia Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, located at 569 Broadway, right here in Newark, New Jersey. We call ourselves, like many other churches, a ch the church in the heart of the city, with the people of the city in its heart. We often say that we are the church in the community, uh, with the people of the community in its heart. And we've come to you with this uh, Bible lesson that we feel will enhance your spiritual development. And Lady Spellman and myself welcome you to our services on uh, Sunday, of course, a Sunday school morning worship. Uh, and then we have Bible teaching and then Friday night evangelistic services. So we invite you and your family to come. We want to look at something very special today. Uh, it's kind of well known, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. But sometimes we have to look at it and the same words and the same verses and the same passages of scripture or will teach us something new each time. And this is what you call, the way we want to approach this, an expository Bible study lesson. They have expository sermons in which you start with one verse and go through uh, su successfully and in sequence uh, of the other verses. And you don't, you explain each verse as you go down, uh, as you read the word of God. And so we have this morning one of our favorites. It's all of our favorites in many respects. Uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And what an opportunity it is to be the sheep of his pasture. But before we go into our lesson, we want to ask the Lord's blessing that it feeds you and feed your soul and your mind and your spirit the way God wants you to have it. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you as we sit for a meal of your word, teach us, teach us with each verse and each word, teach us each passage, give us the understanding, because you said in all that getting, get understanding. All these blessings we ask in Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is my shepherd. And of course, 20, the 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And then it continues, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It didn't say death, but I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, what a feast and a meal. But we want to just look at the first five words, and I hope we are able to show you something that is very unique about the Word of God. There are words, not necessarily sentences or verses, that teach us. And we want to look at the first five words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And what I want to show you in this expository teaching 
is how there's a message in each of those uh, parts of a word, the or verse. The Lord is my shepherd. And the scripture tells us in 100 Psalms, know ye that the Lord he is our God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. So many people talk about how they're self-made, but it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. And you are a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery, if I can call you that. You're magnificent. You have a mind uh, that uh, can hold millions of pieces of information. You have a thought process. You have a respiratory system. You have a digestive system. You just, in a physiological way, are a masterpiece. But you are also a soul. And a soul, what doth it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? But the last part says, and we are the sheep of his pasture. The sheep of his pasture. So let us go now into the sanctuary where we will go into depth. Power. Let us it's teaching time. That time during the service where we take 10 minutes for a Bible teaching that is so important. Everyone needs a spiritual meal. Our souls are hungry. Our spirits are hungry. And there's nothing like the Word of God. And this morning, we want to look at probably one of the most well-known passages of Scripture to commit to memory than anyone I can think of. We all know the Lord's Prayer. But then coming thereafter is the 23rd Psalm. Someone has said that the person who wrote this Psalm, and David is given credit for having written it, and we know that David didn't write all the Psalms. He had all kinds of scribes, but he inspired, they were inspired as stenographers. That's how I like to look at all those men, those 40 men who pen the Old and New Testament as we know it. But this one had to know something about being a shepherd. I am your under shepherd. You can't trade in your shepherd. And as many times as I've been to Israel and the Middle East and seen shepherds and watched them and observed them and observed sheep, it's a fascinating thing. And uh, it's a bit touchy, but I saw one case where they have and Someone who is very prominent in this country called somebody a dog. But they have dogs that help the shepherds Amen. keep the sheep. The they drive them. They, when they go off, they will come and herd them up. So being, I'll be a dog or whatever God wants me to be Amen. for his sheep. Are y'all with me? I don't need to be negative, but that's a fact. I'm one of these fellows, I love dogs. I, I'm not so much on cats, but I love my dogs. And uh, all kinds come up on the screen and look like all those commercials, they're smart. They're selling all kinds of things, selling drugs. I mean, I'm talking about prescription drugs and everything else. They'll bring in a dog Amen. because we love our dogs. I remember when you had the fire, David said, but my dog is all right. <laughs> that touched my heart. I want to call your attention to the simplicity and power of this passage of scripture. 
And I won't even cover the whole thing this morning. But I want you to see the significance of gleaning from the word. We must have said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want a hundred thousand times. But I want to take each word and show you where there's a message in each of those five words. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And then you see, I shall not walk. And this is a very unique passage of scripture because we use the words I, me, and my. Usually we are teaching you our, or in a more plural sense, talking about others. And uh, they told me that a lot of people with man, they are concerned about man. But when it comes to grace, you got to be about others. Are you all with me? The Lord is my shepherd. Let me do I shall not want first. And then I'm going to take each of those words, starting with the, which you kind of use in a regular sense. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Uh, that, when we use the word want, means synonymous to need. You have a need to be protected. You have a need to be kept away from evil things. You have a need for food. May not be the food you want, but you have a need for it. You have a need for housing. You have a need for clothes. And when you step out on God, I shall not want. If I need protection, God has it for me. If I need shelter, God has it for me. Whatever I need, and my father used to say, the Lord will never always give you what you want, but he certainly will give you what you need. And if you in his will and in his way, God will give you everything you need. He'll never send you out to fight a battle without all that you need to fight against it. And I'm not talking about guns. The scripture says, 10th chapter, 2 Corinthians, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. To the pulling down of the stronghold, I'm talking about prayer, we'll break him down. Yes. We're going to get a change in government, and it's getting worse every week, but prayer is going to break that chain. Yes. So the weapons of our warfare. And I shall not walk. I don't have to worry about all this going on. God, be not careful or over anxious in anything, Philippians 4 and 6. But with everything, with prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. Get it to God. That's your faith. Lord, I'm depending on you. I'm not going to try to do it myself first. Get it to God first. Let your request be known unto God. And then here comes the beauty of it and the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind. What more could you want? The peace of God. All right, let's get to our words. The, which you use all the time. But did you know there's only one Lord? The Lord. There's one body, one spirit, even as ye are called one hope of your calling. There's one Lord. The Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. The Lord is the Lord, is my life. And even in, you look at Isaiah in the Old Testament, and you look at Isaiah 9 and 6, 
For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. This is what I like. And they shall call him wonderful counselor. And here comes this one word. The mighty God. The everlasting father. The prince of peace. So we have the. Then Lord is in everything that we do. Are y'all with me? I'm only on the second word. <laughs> The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came to eat me and to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamped about me and against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. You see that I coming in, I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire into his temple that's why you're living to dwell in his house somebody said well, where you live i live in jesus well, what is your address jesus what is your name jesus what world did you come from jesus for god created the world all right, let's get to the next word. Is. I heard a sermon one time, right from this passage. The isness of God. <laughs> Y'all get that? The isness, meaning the current presence of God. The isness of God. Immediate. Consistent, continuing, is. Your heart is continuing to be. Your mind is continuing to work. So God is our refuge and strength. And this is what I like. Our very present help in the time of trouble. I'm not talking about, that. yes, he helped you yesterday. Yes, I know he's going to help us tomorrow. Amen. But I'm talking about today. Yes, right the very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore will we not, will we not, we fear. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be cast to the sea. In the midst of the sea, God is our strength and our shelter. Now we come to the next word. The Lord is, and then we get to my. One of the first things that Ryan learned when he was, I don't even think he was three, four months old. But Ryan had a toy and Ryan said, that's mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> and we learned that. That's my suit. That's my car. My, my friend. And that mind is important because everything that God has given you, He's given you a testimony. Uh -huh. yes. Deacon Marcus loved when we talk about testimony because you ought to have a testimony. There's some people used to, when I was growing up, used to memorize that testimony. Same testimony every time. Uh, Lord is blessed right now, just go on. The same testimony every time. But that's something that's happening in your life and I learned that God wants to build a new test testimony. And so Sister Bessie Jones, when she could, uh, contracted cancer and she lived the life of a holy woman and a praying woman and doing all she could and she went to God and said, why? Why? You know that question, why me? 
And the Lord said, and came to her and said, that you might have a greater testimony. Are y'all with me? God want to hear more than the same thing you memorize every time. Yes, he saved your soul. Yes, he brought you out of muck and mire. Yes, he brought you from, from all kinds of tragedies. But some of us have come from drugs. Some of us have come from alcohol. Some of us have come from the street. Some of us have come from the pit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so David said, for the Psalm, second verse, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit and of the miry clay and set my feet on a, a pummel rock and establish my going. First time you ever move on a rock, the rock moves Amen. when you move. That's a very different kind of situation. Amen. And so here you are, my, all of us need to have our own testimony. You all sing that song, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. So the scripture says, we get into that personal, and he had put a new song where in my mouth and even praise unto our God many shall see it in fear and trust in the Lord for in the time of trouble he shall hide who? he shall hide me is yes, that me and now my head shall be lifted up so in the 23rd Psalm says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And, and see, a lot of us like to think of, amen, the green pastures being a great big, look like a golf course. Everything is green that you can see. But in Israel, it's not like that. You have pockets of desert, are you with me? And you have pockets where you don't see any grass for miles around. So the shepherd has to go and lead his flock to where the grass is. Yeah, didn't God lead you to some grass? And then told you, you can't keep eating all the time. I know some folks don't believe that. <laughs> but you can't keep eating, then you need to come inside and rest. Jesus said, come inside and rest a while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he made it to me. And some of us got so many activities and doing so many things, either some folks out there ungodly and ungodly, but then he has to come and strike you and make you lie down and grieve past you. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but I listen to God. I, all that thundering the other night, I just love to hear. It's like God speaking to me. Then I have God speaking to me and say, that, Pastor Spellman, you must be off in the head. But when that pain hits your knee and hits your body, sometimes first thing I think about is God. <laughs> and I say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Feel that pain. Yes, Lord. I'm going to put you through no matter what. His grace. Think about Apostle Paul. I saw these threat right, straight time. I'm preaching, going all these journeys, and man, then don't I deserve to be healed? And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. In my weakness, hallelujah, I have strength. Hallelujah, hallelujah, his grace is sufficient for thee. So, he maketh me to lie down. Now I get to the last part, is the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd that giveth his life for his sheep. I don't think you realize it, but when you sign on and you become a shepherd in Israel, if you have 30 in the herd, you're responsible for 30. And if one gets, if one doesn't come up and all, well, I got 99% of them. And that's why in the book, 
uh, when we talk about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and really the lost son, is talking about individual things. That lost sheep, and you can't say, well, there's still 99 of us, let the 100, he find the way the best way he can. But my Bible tells me that shepherd will go out and he will search where he came from till he finds that sheep. That sheep, that sheep or goat or whoever it might be could be you. You don't want somebody writing you off because God never writes you off. I don't care from the beginning of the first breath to the last breath. And then the, Jesus talks about the hiring. So you can't, you can't hire someone. They have what is called a sheepfold. And they build it with sticks. And some of them have walls. There's only one entrance into the sheepfold. Amen. And the shepherd sleeps in the doorway. Yeah. The only way in and the only way out is through the doorway. And the, Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. Hallelujah. I'm not going to trust a hireling. See? And see all the shepherds used to, and this is very important, uh, if you have 20 in your flock, and I have 30 in my flock, and you have 30 in yours, we put them together in a large sheep fold, because we have to get some rest, so we go and we do and get a hireling. That hireling will never take the responsibility toward your sheep as you do. Are you with me? And see, I mean, you may, they all look the same. But when that shepherd comes on that morning and calls his sheep, all of his 30, all of his 40, all of his specific, they know his voice. And Jesus said, my sheep know it. My boy. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you know when God is speaking to you. You know when God is calling you. Hallelujah. And so let me run through and then we're going to finish up here. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The hireling fleeth because he's a hireling and careth not for the sheep. But I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. Are y'all with me? Now, a good shepherd bathes his sheep in oil. Amen. First he bathes them in water. He doesn't go out and get some ivory soap and all, but the sheep bath is important. And back there when they used to sacrifice the lambs and the sheep, they used to have a bath. And so the pool of Bethesda, where the man who was sick for 38 years that was a pool where they used to wash the sheep before they were brought to the priests in the temple. Are y'all with me? And so they would bathe them. But another thing they would do after they bathed them was put oil on them. Are, are, are you with me? And they would oil them down. Why? Because the insects were so bad. They would get in the sheep's ear. And somebody know what I'm talking about here. When a mosquito get in your ear, you don't know what to do. You start banging your head, knocking, and you knock some water over, and you go and see what happens with the sheep. They, they go and they lose it. And they get wild because that, that bug or that uh, insect is driving them mad. And that's what the devil tries to do. Get in your skin. Get under your skin. And that's why you're washed. You are baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, but you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You're oiled up for Christ. And the devil knows who you are. Are y'all with me? And another thing about sheep, unlike a dog or a, a horse, they can whine and get up on their own when they're on their back. But did you know that a sheep, when you put them on their back, they can't get up on their own. They got to wait for the shepherd to come and turn them over. Some of us don't realize that one day. You can't get up by yourself. You need God to come. You need the shepherd to come and put you back on your feet. So you can stand and say, I was in my
drunken mind. I was in a dirty pit. God took me and turned me around. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the sheep are taken off their backs. He leads his sheep, and the scripture says, he leadeth me beside still waters. And around the Sea of Galilee, when you go around the banks and all, it's kind of rough because the waves come, and the sheep are very timid. Are you with me? And the least bit of noise, they're gone. I wish I had some folks like that. Yeah, I came and just make a little noise and they would go. But noise draws them sometimes. But the noise and the sheep wear back and you know the sheep need water in order to live. So what the shepherd does is he takes and digs a trench from the Sea of Galilee and he makes a little side pool that's still with water. And then the sheep can come and be refreshed. Are y'all with me? Don't have to worry about the noise. And that they can refresh. He leaded me besides still waters. Water that I need. Water that I have to have. Water that the Lord wants me to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He provides a pond for that timid sheep. He sits and he walks above his sheep. Amen. So he can see what's going on. He's not above in the sense, but he, he walks so he can see in the distance. Then he leads them. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. Hallelujah. That's one of the biggest ones. You don't go anywhere without your shepherd. You can't come up to me. I'm, I'm not my shepherd. I am be with him today. I'm going to have a vacation. You go wherever your shepherd is. And then when you wander off, that rod, that little cup, looks like a candy cane. On that cane is used to bring you in when you go astray. And he can take that and pull you back. You're going the wrong way. You're getting a little bit too far away. That rod and that staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the herd keeps one eye on the shepherd and one eye on the grass. And I've seen in a case where a man had a whole flock and a car came and he did and walked to the left, the whole herd moved to the left. Then he moved to the right, the whole herd moved back. Amen. And so the sheep, they know their shepherd's voice. They know their shepherd not going to lead them into disaster. They know their shepherd not going to lead them into trouble. So they know his voice. Some sheep use their voice, some use a bell, some use other things, but they know that sound. And sometimes a girl, it's not always men, I want to get that clear. When a man has all daughters, the daughters have to take care of the herd. And so you see that. So my shepherd never leaves me. Are y'all with me? Now I'm going to get kind of rough here, but some people misinterpret that scripture obey them that have rule over you for they watch for your soul see a lot of people that's my shepherding job if i think you're going the wrong way i need to get to you are y'all with me some things in appearance look like one thing but you go around and visit that's how the devil the devil picks up more people and he picks them up out of a church that somebody think they're going to get something better in that church. Well, you, you shouldn't. You need to let the Lord lead you. And I am his under shepherd. And I'm not going to lead you anywhere that's not scripture. I'm not going to lead you anywhere that is not right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm trying to get in your business. And, and the Bible says, obey them that have rule over you. But you all need to read that other part. For they watch for your soul. In my final conclusion, you walk. You hear me say this. You come into the world, I don't care if you are a robber, if you are a murderer. You have the grace of God. You have the mercy of God. And you have the goodness of God. You got that going for you? I don't care who you are. 
and the Lord let you keep that grace. Yeah. That's what happened. Uh, Moses' mother put him out on the water on grace. That now river represented grace. And the Bible said when she could hide him no longer, she set him out on the basket. Hallelujah. But if you remember the prodigal son I was talking about, I was still used to wonder why that father didn't worry about it. Why he didn't send out a sick party? Why he didn't do it? Because that represents that father knew that that young man, wherever he went, he had the love of God. He had the grace of God. And he had the mercy of God. I don't care. He spun and spit up all. He wasted all. Got down in the pool. Got down in the pig pen. And the Bible said when he came to himself, hallelujah, God will let his grace bring you to a pit, a pig pen, where you don't have any. And you'll come to your senses. And you'll say, my father's house. Ah, he had servants that wore garments that were rolled in my father's house. They ate the finest meal. And I'm going to go to my father and ask him, can I be a servant? That's what we all ought to do. And so, my last statement. I have a responsibility as one of the sheep. You see, sheep breed sheep. Shepherds don't breed sheep. That's why I always, when I hear a preacher brag about, tell me, I preach that church out. No, That's why ain't nobody there, because you preached it out. <laughs> out. You didn't preach anything. No, you didn't. The word is sharper than a two-edged sword. We asked Bishop Warner one time, Bishop Warner, how these preachers get away with it? They're living all kind of lives. Amen. Running women, doing all kind of things. And they get up and preach, and people get saved. And he said, God honors his word. Bishop Lawson said that. God honors his word. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. God will deal with the preacher later, but he's going to honor his word. Hallelujah. The word had I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him. So I want everybody to repeat after me. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready for our offering. Before we have our offering, one if there's anyone who wants to come and be a part of this flock, and don't get me wrong, if some preachers go out and say that church is the only right church, not true. If they're living for God, they're right. The Bible says repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you here this morning? Hallelujah. We're going to have song you may come anyone want prayer come up now hallelujah